हेलो क्लास थर्ड स्टूडेंट्स टुडे आई विल टीच यू साइंस वी विल लर्न अबाउट द पार्ट्स ऑफ अ प्लांट द यूनिट नेम इज प्लांट लाइफ एंड द चैप्टर नेम इज पार्ट्स ऑफ अ प्लांट इन दिस चैप्टर यू विल लर्न अबाउट पार्ट्स ऑफ अ प्लांट फंक्शंस ऑफ वेरियस पार्ट्स एंड जर्मिनेशन द हार्ड वर्ड्स ऑफ द चैप्टर आर रूट रूट मीन्स द अंडरग्राउंड पार्ट ऑफ अ प्लांट photosynthesis photosynthesis means the process of making food by plants germination germination means the growth of a seed into a seedling upright upright means straight stomata stomata means tiny holes on a leaf now we will begin our chapter in this chapter you will learn just as we have eyes ears nose hands and legs a plant also has many parts now we have our first heading parts of a plant and below it there is named all the parts that a plant has the first name is root the second name is stem the third name is branches the fourth name is leaves the fifth name is buds the sixth name is flower and the seventh name is fruits Besides the name you can see a picture There is a plant growing from the root to the tip The body under the soil is called the root and the body above the soil is called shoot The shoot has various parts You can see all the names in the picture The part of a plant which grows above the ground is called the shoot the part which grows below the ground is called the root the shoot has a stem branches leaves buds flower and fruits now we have our next heading root root is the underground part of a plant it grows below the ground there are two types of roots the first one is tap root and the second one is fibrous root Now I have drawn a picture for you just as in your book. You can see the picture. The plant has started from the root and it has grown into the stem, then it has grown branches. The branches then grown has tree uh, sorry leaves. Then the leaves have grown into the buds and the buds has grown into the flower and the flower has grown into the fruit. Now on the next page I have drawn a picture for you of the root. The first one is tap root and the second one is fibrous root. In the tap root you can see a main root growing inside the soil going deep. And it has many branches coming out of it. These branches are called root hairs. In the second picture you can see a fibrous root. There is no main root inside this. It has turned into branches. right from the soil now on the next page you can see the definition of tap root some plants have one main root growing from the end of the stem from this main root many roots grow out the main root is called tap root plants like bean mustard mango etc have tap roots in the next heading you can see the definition of fibrous root Some plants have thin roots growing out in all direction from the end of the stem. This is called fibrous root. Plants like rice, wheat and onion have fibrous roots. Now you can see the functions of root. The first function is fixation. The root fixes the plant firmly in the soil. It means if there is no root, the plant will fall down. The second one is absorption. Root absorbs water and minerals from the soil. It means when you put water in the plant, it is only the root that helps the plant to absorb the water. Then it goes inside the plant and other parts of it. And plant body also needs mineral just like we do. That's why the plant also absorbs minerals from the root the third function is the storage of food some plants store food in their roots 
examples radish and carrot it means root also works as a storage device for the food the extra food that has been made inside the leaf can be stored in the root now on the next heading we see the next part of of the plant it is a stem the part of the plant which grows above the ground is called a stem it bears branches leaves flowers and fruits now you see the functions of a stem the first point is the stem keeps the plant upright it means the stem helps the plant to stay straight The second point is it helps in carrying food from leaves to other parts. It means that the food that has been made inside the leaf goes into other parts of the plant with the help of the stem and its branches. The third point is it also carries water and minerals from the root to other parts of the plant. It means the stem helps to carry out water and minerals from the root to the branches and flowers leaves and fruits the fourth point is a stem of some plants store extra fruit prepared by the plant it means some specific plants contain food that has been prepared inside the leaf for example ginger potato and sugar cane On the next page you can see I have drawn a picture for you. In this picture you can see where the water comes from. It comes from the root. And on the second point where the food comes from. It comes from the leaf because it is made inside the leaves. And now on the second point I have written how it flows. How the stem helps with the water and food. to transport first point is mentioned as xylem it is the name of a tissue that helps the plant to carry out water the second point is named as phloem it helps the plant to carry out food the water is transported from the root to the tip of the plant and the food is carried from the tip of the plant it means from the leaves to the other parts like roots fruits and stem it it is carried out with the help of phloem now on the next page we can see our next heading leaf leaves grow on stems they prepare food for the plant they are known as the kitchen of the plant leaves are green in color because they have a pigment called chlorophyll which is green in color chlorophyll gives green color to leaves now we will know about the parts of a leaf the first part is called petiole or stalk the second part is called leaf blade the third part is called main vein the fourth part is called side vein you can see in the picture the petiole is the part where the leaves are attached from the branches and it further grows into the main vein the side veins come from the main vein and the parts besides the leaf uh, beside the main vein are called leaf blade now we will know about the functions of a leaf in the presence of sunlight the leaf prepares food for the plant The green leaf uses carbon dioxide from the air and water from the soil to prepare food for the plant. This process is called photosynthesis. Now there is a equation for you: chlorophyll plus carbon dioxide plus water plus sunlight. Then it transforms into sugar plus oxygen. It means that the chlorophyll the leaf has grabs carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and water from the roots. and sunlight from the sun and cooks food for the plant the food is named as sugar and then it releases oxygen back into the atmosphere now there is a question for you plants prepare food only during the daytime can you guess why 
think about it and answer the question. When observed carefully with the help of a magnifying glass, we can see tiny holes present on the lower surface of a leaf. These tiny holes are called stomata. While making food, they take in carbon dioxide and give out oxygen. Thus, they clean the air. Now on the next page, there is a picture of a leaf with all the parts named around it. See clearly and tell me, can you recognize the parts? Now on the next page, I have described what is photosynthesis. Photosynthesis happens in all the green parts of the plant. For example, leaves. It happens with the help of chlorophyll, carbon dioxide, water and sunlight. Now on the next page you can see a clear equation chlorophyll plus water plus carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is known as CO2 in science language plus sunlight. Then it transforms into sugar plus oxygen. Sugar is carbohydrate. That means the plant makes its food in the form of carbohydrate. Now on the next page, leaves of some plants store food. For example, cabbage, spinach and mint. Now we will learn about flowers. Flowers grow on stems. A flower is the most beautiful part of a plant. It is the reproductive organ of a plant. Some flowers change into fruits, flowers of different shapes and colors. It means the flower grows into the fruit, then the fruit grows into a seed. And I have already told you that the seed is the baby of a plant. That means a new plant grows from the seed and the seed is uh, growing from the fruit. Where does the fruit come from? The fruit comes from the flowers. That's why it is called the reproductive organ. Now we will learn about fruits. Most fruits have seeds inside them. Seeds grow into new plants. Fruits like watermelon, papaya and oranges have many seeds. Fruits like plum and mango have only one seed inside them. Fruits like banana have no seed inside them. You can see the pictures. There is a banana that has no seeds. You can see papaya and watermelon that has many seeds. And you can see a mango that has only one seed inside it. Now on the next page there is a trivia for you. The parts of a plant are named. You have to recorrect the names. Now on the next page, a seed has a baby plant called embryo growing inside it. A seed grows into a new plant when it gets proper air, water and warmth. In the picture you can see a seed growing into a tree. In the first picture there is a seed. In the second picture a little part of the root has grown out. On the third picture the grown out part has go growing down the soil and some of its part has been coming up. On the fourth picture, the upper part is growing in, into the stem and the lower part is growing into the root. In the fifth picture, you can clearly see that the root has been developed and the stem has been developed also. And leaves are coming out of the stem. On the, in the last picture, the plant has completely developed in the light of the sun. It has many leaves and the root has grown deep inside the soil. It is called a seedling. The growth of a seed into a seedling is called germination. Germination is the name of the process. That means when a seed grows into a baby plant that we call seedling is called germination. Now your chapter has finished. You have to revise it carefully and learn all the parts of the plant. On the next page, 
there is a picture of a real plant growing from the seed into plant now try it at home plant a seed and then see it grow into trees